I have a guest that has just arrived, a very special guest, and here he comes now. <laughs> and I'm so excited because he's a very good pal, and I've done a number of videos with him, and his name is Luis Tabone. It's Luis Tabone. I did the library, Long Beach Public Library video. Right. And we did the um, video in his front yard. We did the crop swap video. And the crop swap video, that's true. We've done a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and Luis is up here because he's gonna take my, what's it called, a dehydrator? The dehydrator. Dehydrator off my hands because it turns out I just didn't use it for a whole year. Oh wow. And, <laughs> and he has a relationship with a vegan chef in Long Beach and he is going to take a five gallon bucket. A you see it over bottles. there? Wow. <laughs> She's oh, not my. kidding. <laughs> Tell my audience, Luis, all the stuff you're involved in regarding food in Long Beach. Oh, I can't geez. even keep track of it all. <laughs> it's hard for me. The Crop Swap app is basically you download the app and any access as pineapple guavas, you would put, post it on there, give a description of how it was grown and whatnot, post it on there. And then your neighbors hopefully can sign in, and see the stuff on there. And, well, I've got too many oranges because I've got too many oranges on my tree. Well, you know what? I want some pineapple guava. So they'll post their oranges. They'll submit the trade. And then you guys will meet up wherever you want, whether your house, their house, somewhere in between. And basically just swap. And now you've got a new gardening friend that you can go to for oranges. And they've got a new friend that they can go to for pineapple guavas or whatever it is that you have access of. I, I think it would be wonderful for everybody to have this who has, you have to have a smartphone. Yes, obviously. Um, we have the iPhone version out now. Oh, we good. are working on the Android version. There is a beta out. Uh, the update should hopefully be out in a couple weeks, but we are working on a version two that's just insane. Um, it's so much more incorporated into it just to connect more people. That's wonderful. I mean, the connection of the food community is what's going to be so vital going right. forward, especially with the way things are. Right. Uh, can't even <laughs> get, go there. And what else? I help people install their gardens at home, container gardens mostly. They go in, I go in and say, this is what you can do. We put in the, um, the containers and I get pictures sent to me of eggplants and peppers and all kinds of stuff. Now this is a paid service. You get paid right, for this, right? right okay, right. good. Um, but you also have a full-time job. I do have a full-time job, yes. And a wife and two kids. Right. Young kids, James and... Samuel. Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Oh my God, I love his boys. They're still in bed when they left, so... <laughs> oh, okay. And uh, my crows. And what else? Do you have a follow-up to the to the fig jam uh, competition? You know, we didn't actually, we thought about it, but the main person that was providing the figs, he moved. And so he oh. no longer has the fig tree. I could have had one this year. I had so many figs. <laughs> I know. We've all seen them. We all want to eat them. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't live in Long Beach. Long Beach is about, uh, well, on Sunday morning, how, how long did it take you to get her? An hour? No, actually less than that. It only took like 40 minutes. I left yeah. from Lakewood. I left from yeah. Lakewood and it's not, Traffic was very nice. <laughs> yeah, it's not that far from Los An where I live to to Lakewood or, or Long Beach, but uh, except for traffic. Well, I'm going to show him around the garden. He's never seen it after no. all this time no. because he was ha busy having a little another little boy. Yes. And uh, that took a lot of time, and, and he's very involved in the food movement and his job and your family. Yes. So this is the first time he's gotten a chance to get up here. We've yes. known each other for oh my gosh. We, didn't we start on our very first Facebook group together? Yes. <laughs> Growing Vegetables in California, isn't that yes, how and we that, connected? Yes, and that one is still around. Um, I know, still I don't about know. 20, 20 something members. And we just had the most amazing rain this yes. week. Yes, oh my and God. every one of my rain barrels are full. I haven't even checked mine. I've got. Two. I've only got two. I know you have a lot, I only have two. <laughs> well, I had four, Okay. and then I bought uh, someone was selling four used ones on Craigslist and I went and got those and oh, wow. I, these got properly hooked up okay kind of I didn't even notice them there yeah I know <laughs> that's the thing it's like they're right on my front porch but you don't really see them because I have so many plants and um, and then the other two are just sitting on the ground oh. and so now they're full 55 gallons of water yeah. in them so oh wow 
Oh, I started uh, with my chef, uh, with Melissa. Oh, yeah. She just bought a house in Long Beach and we're turning her parkway into a community garden. Oh, fantastic. So we're doing the, uh, the Ron Finley idea. That's wonderful. So, um, which is what I have. Also. Yeah, I mean, yes, what you have here. Yeah. So we're putting out the beds. I've already designed them. It's just standard three by three beds. It's not going to be anything fancy. Um, we would be doing four by four, but the parkway is only about four and a half feet. So yeah. I, I want to yeah. give them, I want to give her a little more room. Right. But we're going to plant it out or plant it out and um, let the community come in and help harvest and help clean up and you know, do all the gardening chores. That's a fantastic idea if you are an urban, if you do desire to be an urban gardener and the only space you have is the parkway, check your local ordinances to make sure that you're within um, right. your legal rights to put in a vegetable garden. Because of Ron Finley, who is now world famous, I think he's in New Zealand right now, he started it a movement here in LA that and and he got enough people and the city council behind him and right. they got the law changed check your local ordinances and as he just pointed out his beds are three by six or three by whatever we're probably going to only do three by three that way right we, we have some walkways you don't have to go all the way around to get to the other side exactly which is what I was going to say about if you're making your first raised bed uh, three feet deep is a great space because you can reach across and not have to right. walk into your bed and trample right. anything right, right, right and once it gets to be over four feet then you're kind of you're kind of pushing it you're pushing it and you and you you might have to be stepping in there i have one that's as you can see right five by ten and we have to walk in there all the time so well, as long as you have like a dedicated path in there i don't have oh. that <laughs> And the problem with making a dedicated path is, okay, you think, well, stones, okay. Right. Yes, who loves to live under stones? Oh. Slugs, slugs, not oh. snails. Snails can't go underground, but right. um, slugs do. Oh, and, okay. And uh, did you know that? No, well, I didn't. Well, snails could find a crevice. If you have wood chips, you do wood chips, right? Um, I do wood chips. I do the, on the beds as actual mulch. Right. I have the cedar mulch. Okay. I put in cedar mulch. So you haven't just actually gotten wood? No. Okay. I actually want to do that, um, but the problem is because it's so much. Yes, I have a big garden in the front yard, but not enough to warrant me calling a, a tree company and they show up with, you know, eight or ten yards of wood chips. If someone is on your street um, chipping, mm -hmm. you can say, can I just get a portion of that. You don't okay. have to get the whole load. Oh, okay. I'll <laughs> try know? that the next time because my neighbors the, get some, get those trees trimmed. And and you're still trying to maintain grass in between your bed. See, you could just cover the whole thing full of wood chips. <laughs> All my California friends. If, if you, you know. follow anybody in California on Instagram, we're, we're like going, it's raining, it's <laughs> raining, right? On the drive home on Friday, I could see the lightning and I'm like, that doesn't look right. About two minutes later, I, I see the, the water drop with sitting in the wind. I'm like, what the heck is that? It caught us by surprise, sort of like really this did. tragic storm on the East Coast this week. I think that oh caught God. so many people by surprise. You know, the last hurricane, Florence, was all this lead up, and it was out in the right. ocean for a long time, right, right, and right, people right. had time to get prepared and evacuate and, that were going to. And with this storm, it oh my, up so much destruction. It just, boom, it was just there. It, yeah. You know, nobody was prepared, and oh my gosh, it's just been horrible. And our prayers go out to all the people that were Definitely. terribly affected in Florida. Uh, Florida has just been the Panhandle liner oh, got hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though I have, you know, I'm all front yard garden too, and boy, a lot of people know about it. Right. You know, I was at the physical therapist for my last appointment on my shoulder oh, right. a week ago, and a man was came up to pay or check out or get an appointment and I said you look familiar and we were trying to think if it was through you know the entertainment business or whatever right he is a director and so uh, he goes you're the garden lady <laughs> <laughs> he said you're the garden lady and he and his wife and had been walking their dog by here and we had talked before so that's uh, how okay. we, yeah we connected but has that happened to you the most recent one I can think of would be Melissa. We've only known each other for maybe a year. 
The house is two stories. The back of the house has a um, deck. Ha thank you. Has a deck, <laughs> and so she's gonna extend it over. He's on got top two kids. That's so understandable. It's gonna go. Two I, little kids. I couldn't think of the word. She was gonna extend the back deck, add on to on top of the actual garage. She wants to do everything edible. From rubbing off on you. Basically. You. That's wonderful. Just seeing all the stuff because she comes over and she's actually brought a couple of people over and they're like, how does he do it? Now I've got to go over and figure out what she wants to do on her garage roof. You have to have easy, safe access. Right. When you, I mean, I would love to grow right up there because that gets the most sun, but you're talking yeah. on the roof. And as you see in my video today, you haven't seen it yet. Okay. I went up on the roof to try to pick olives off that tree and I felt like my life was in danger. The gutter is not going to stop you from going oh, off. I know, not at all. You know, so if you have a real small space to grow, um, be sure that you have, your it's safe and accessible before you start right. things. Right. The backyard is only like maybe two feet wide, if even that. So they're just going to put stairs going straight up, that way you don't have to even go in the house. That's why I can't grow much in the back of this house because they built two massive mm. two-story uh, houses the legal setback from your house to your property line is only five feet oh, wow. so if it's five feet five feet it's ten feet from wall to wall oh wow and if that is a massive two-story and you're a one-story it's going to be hard to get any sun in your backyard yeah, no, it is. Well, thank you so much for being here, for <laughs> no sharing, problem. and, and it wasn't, it, wasn't it exciting to have Luis visit my garden? I it is very so nice. Excited. I'm excited. Thanks so much for watching this little conversation with my garden buddy, and stay tuned for much, much more on my garden channel, and thank you so much for watching. That's it. <laughs> Roll. Oh, okay. This is my neighbor, Hello. Steve, Hello. who went to Stanford, Woo like, Go Cardinal. like my son. And this is Luis, my Luis. friend from Long Beach. Hi, Luis. Hi. Nice to meet nice you. To meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you. He jogs. Yes, yes. <laughs> Kay has the best garden, and she's the best neighbor anyone can ask for. Oh, so. my goodness. <laughs> yes, but have I convinced you to start gardening and showing your girls how to garden? <laughs> you've convinced me, yes. I could be better, but you've convinced me, and thankfully our local school has a gardening program. Oh, that's oh, good. Awesome. That's good. Yeah, well, that's only because of parent involvement. So. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Well, I'll let you get back to your All show. Right. All right, All right. Bye. bye. Nice bye. to meet you, Luis. Have a good day. <laughs> I'll put that down for a second. Oh my god. That really is a five gallon bucket of pineapple guava. You can add another gallon in the bag, yeah, so maybe six a, gallons. Plus a gallon. <laughs> and an apricot tree. Apricot. This is one of the apricots that uh, I grabbed from across the street. I have no place for it, and I was wondering what in the world I was going to do with it. So I'm so happy. You call me, apparently. Yeah, and it makes really nice apricots, I, I'm told. Oh, okay.